if you were to want a broader spectrum of things going on in this movie I'm about to review, wouldn't it make it more of an action slash destruction film rather than a horror slash thriller type film? I mean, seriously, the movie that I'm about to review is fine for what it is. Besides, if the first one was going to be about what was going on throughout the night around the whole entire world, where would that leave room for a sequel? It would kind of be a repeat after repeat of unoriginal ideas if it was to go on the route of having lots of shit happen for 90 minutes. So why do the fans want that? I don't know. It would have sucked if it gone down on that route. Thank God it didn't. <laughs> A part home invasion, part suspenseful thriller type movie from this year. 2013. This is also the movie with the most annoying sound effect I've ever heard in my life that was not only in the trailer, but on TV whenever it's like 3 o'clock in the morning and some asshole is like pressing the button like, let's wake up 3 million people in the world. Today. Tonight. And. Tomorrow. Okay, now let me say, I've given a lot of thought for this movie, and in return it's given me a lot of pleasure. And as in pleasure, I mean an awesome kick-ass concept. I love this movie's idea, and I'm glad they didn't expand it to a broader story because then there wouldn't possibly be superb or even remotely decent sequels. Because then there wouldn't be any more original ideas. Let's go into the plot, shall we? The plot for this movie centers around Ethan Hawke's character named James Sandin and his character wife named Mary Sandin and their two character children named Charlie and Zoe Sandin. By the way, doesn't the character of Charlie look like the same kid from Sinister? He's not the same character, but they do look somewhat alike. Must be the haircut. Anyways, in this movie's world where the Sandins are thriving and living in has a single night in the whole year where crime is legal. Yeah, that's right. Murder, rape, robbery, etc. is all legal in this so-called perfect world. And as in perfect world, I mean throughout the rest of the year, crime is low, and everything else is in good standing. Which doesn't make that much sense, because wouldn't people who go to work, school, or even just out for a walk be afraid of making enemies that will later on seek their life during the purge? Okay, so as the story progresses, the character of Charlie lets a stranger in their house. Who, wouldn't you know it, is getting chased by a group of sick fuckers. And of course, these sick fuckers want him back and they'll gladly do anything to get what they came for. I watched this movie with medium expectations. I wasn't too excited, but at the same time, I was interested to see how it would turn out. I ended up really freaking enjoying this movie. Another problem I have with this movie is, as I said before, the purge really wouldn't help benefit anyone. It just doesn't seem like it would work that well. It'd be kind of funny if the government was actually planning on doing something like this, and then the director from the movie cared about this and said, hey man, I can prove that this is a shitty idea by making a film that will change your mind indefinitely. And what do you know? It worked. And I'm glad it worked. Or did it? <coughs> Overall, I give The Purge a 3.5 out of 5. Lie, I'm Brian Gatto, host of Horror Show Movie Reviews. Make sure to like my Facebook page in the description below, and to leave comments and subscribe.